part of part of my charge today is to talk about why your discussion here is so important for us specifically in the state of Mississippi. So this is a stat that probably everybody in this room knows already. Two years, for the last two years, WLBT has reported that the city of Jackson, where we're sitting right now, the city of Jackson has had the highest number of per capita homicides of any major metro area in the United States. It's a tragic fact and most of us know it. Here's a stat that most of us may not know. This is actually a Mississippi problem. The CDC ranks Mississippi as the number one state for per capita homicides of any state in the entire country. So, so the big question then is what happens when you do what Rafael did, which is to take Jackson's homicide stats out of Mississippi's stats. So let's use Illinois for example. Six months ago Heritage did a study where they took Illinois and they stripped out Chicago's homicide stats and they looked at how safe Illinois was before with Chicago stats in there and then after, after you remove those homicide stats. Taking out Chicago reduces Illinois' homicide rate by 55%. In fact, it moves, this is exactly what he was saying, it moves Illinois from being a top 10 most dangerous state to being one of the 20 safest states in the country. So now the big question for us, right? What happens when you do that with Mississippi and Hines County. Hines County is the county that we're sitting in right now. We actually have a different spin on this problem. If you take Hines County's homicide stats out of Mississippi stats, Mississippi is still one of the five most dangerous states in the country for the per capita number of homicides. This is a Mississippi problem. It's not just a Jackson problem. It's a Mississippi problem. Now, I've had folks tell me, well look Shad, that's, that's all very interesting. I'm glad you've discerned that crime is a Mississippi problem, but I live in a place that's not particularly dangerous. I, I live in Madison. We don't have crime in Madison. Well, look, I'll tell you that this is a problem for you as well for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the folks who are being murdered and the families who are suffering are your brothers and sisters who live 30 minutes that way. You should be concerned for them. You should have an ethical concern for those families. But number two, if you just happen to be a person who's only self-interested, I can tell you that this, this epidemic is costing you as well. So in the state auditor's office, we started looking at the data and we realized that for each new homicide that happens in the state of Mississippi, that homicide costs taxpayers in the state between $900,000 and $1.2 million per homicide. That's coming out of your pocket whether you live in a crime-prone area or not. That's the cost of incarceration, prosecution, all of the costs that come along with crime are coming out of your pocket. So this is a Mississippi problem. And, and I guarantee you it's widespread. 52 of Mississippi's 82 counties actually have a homicide rate that is higher than the national average. It is not just a Hines County problem. This is a Mississippi problem that we have to deal with. And, and so what I'm grateful for is I'm grateful for a nationally recognized expert to come here and tell us about the real data underlying real solutions so that we can get at this problem. We know that this, this strikes at the heart of the most vulnerable among us. Uh, Raphael spoke to this. Clarion Ledger reported two years ago that the typical victim of homicide in Jackson was a black Jacksonian between the ages of 20 and 30. We have a responsibility to the, to the least of these, to the most vulnerable in our society, to enact real solutions to get at this problem. And in fact, what Raphael's described, the benefits of policing, Police are incredibly popular if you start looking at it because the, the most vulnerable communities know that police mean safety. Gallup did a poll a couple of years ago that showed that 81% of black Americans want the same or more police presence in their communities. That shows that, that everybody, doesn't matter who you are, everybody understands that when you see a police officer on the street, you're more likely to be safe in that scenario. And this is an important conversation for us to have as we debate about these solutions, as we debate about the solutions to our per capita homicide problem. I promise you that Mississippians are concerned about this. I don't know how many of you read Magnolia Tribune. If you don't read it, you should read it. But Magnolia Tribune commissioned a professional poll last month, and they asked Mississippians, what are the issues that you care the most about? I've read 100 of these polls in my life. What are the issues that you care the most about? What's number one? It's number one every time. Jobs, jobs in the economy. It's number one on every poll like that that you read. But what was number two? What was the second most important issues, issue to Mississippians in that poll? Crime. Now for a lot of that, for a lot of us, we wouldn't think that because maybe we live in a place that's safe. 
But for a lot of Mississippians out there, this is a bread and butter issue. This is an issue that affects them every single day. So in, in synthesizing what Raphael said, you know, what I hear when I hear his read of the research, I hear that we have to be for more policing in these vulnerable areas. We have to get tough on violent criminals. We've got to stop catch and release. Catch and release is a huge problem that he described through the data, but, but we know it exists here in the state of Mississippi too. Last year, I'll give you one example of many. Last year, a guy named Jermaine White was released from prison. He had had multiple arrests prior to his release from prison. He was a convicted felon. He was released on bond without even paying the bond. I'm not sure how you do that. He was released on bond after being arrested for being a felon in possession of a firearm. And once he was released, he went about six miles from here to a motel just on the other side of Fondren, and he murdered two women. And their lives are gone forever. So we have to ask ourselves when we're having these big picture policy debates, are we willing to protect the rights of Jermaine in order to give up the rights of those two women who were killed? How are we going to balance these things out? How are we going to protect those two women and the other people who are living in the most vulnerable parts of our state? And how are we going to make sure that Mississippi is safe in the long run? Our long-term success, our, our, our ability to achieve our potential as a state hinges on this question, I think.